Greetings everyone and welcome to another episode of Anime Recap. Today we will be going through the 2005 psychological anime, Monster. The story revolves around Kenzo Tenma, a Japanese surgeon living in Dusseldorf, Germany whose life enters turmoil after getting himself involved with Johann Liebert, one of his former patients, who is revealed to be a dangerous serial killer. Before this video start, if you wish to support me then consider checking out my merch store as well as my Ko-Fi page. That would be much appreciated and without any further ado, let's jump straight into the recap. Dr. Kenzo Tenma, head of neurosurgery at the Isler Memorial Hospital in Dusseldorf, carries out a successful surgery on a famous opera singer, but the hospital director Udo Heinemann takes the credit during a press conference. Later, Dr. Tenma is saddened when he discovers that an operation on a Turkish construction worker was given a lower priority and subsequently died where his widow blamed him for not operating on him. When out with Heinemann's daughter Eva, he states that the Turkish worker died because Dr. Becker took too long treating him, but she comments that not all people are equal. Days later, Tenma is called in to remove a bullet from the head of Johan, the adopted son of Mr. and Mrs. Liebert who were shot dead in their home. His twin sister Anna is also admitted in a state of post-traumatic amnesia, muttering the words, kill him. When Tenma is about to commence the operation, he is called away by Chief of Surgery Dr. Oppenheim on phone-based instructions from Director Heinemann to start surgery on Mayor Rodecker, who had previously committed a large amount of funds to the hospital. When Tenma states that he's the only one who can operate on Johan and to have Dr. Boyer handle the mayor, Heinemann advises Tenma to do the job as Mayor Rodecker is going to review the hospital next month. Due to his conscience, Tenma decided to go against Heinemann's orders and operate on Johan. He is able to save Johan's life, but Mayor Rodecker dies during surgery causing Boyer and Oppenheim to scold Tenma. Oppenheim has forwarded his report to the director as news of a new mayor is taking place. Director Heinemann stated in a press conference that Mayor Rodecker died of a cerebral infarction and that they did their best to save his life. Later at a hospital banquet, while apologizing to Director Heinemann, Tenma is shocked when Boyer is revealed to be the new head of neurosurgery. Heinemann allows Tenma to keep his job and states that he won't accept his papers for the next health summit, and to make matters worse, Eva Heinemann callously breaks off their engagement. Tenma confesses to the apparently unconscious Johan that he wishes director Heinemann was dead and meanwhile, Detective Egan Weisbach tries to get Anna Lieber to remember her name and the events of the night her parents died. Heinemann suggests Boyer and Oppenheim providing photographs of the Lieber twins to the media in order to play on public sympathy and garner attention for the hospital. After a brief argument about the photographic action, Boyer states to Tenma that he served his purpose with the boy and some nights later. A nurse discovers Oppenheim and Boyer dead in their offices while Eva finds her father dead in his study. The police arrive at Tenma's apartment and inform him that the others Boyer were found dead and when he returns to the hospital, he also learns that the Lieber twins have disappeared. Following Heinemann's funeral, Tenma is informed by Inspector Egon and Inspector Heinrich Lunge of the BK that the dead men were poisoned by candy containing a muscle relaxant and Lunge suspects the doctor may be involved. Tenma considers returning to Japan but with the open position created by the three deaths and another doctor transferring, he is promoted to chief of surgery at the hospital by the unnamed chairman of the board. And when Eva attempts to reconcile with him, Tenma rebuffs her. Nine years later, Tenma has become highly successful and continues to operate on difficult cases while training other surgeons. When Adolf Junkers, a known criminal lockpicker is hit by a car, Tenma is called in to operate on him only to again encounters Inspector Lunge, who is investigating the criminal's involvement in a series of mysterious murders of wealthy middle-aged couples in their homes. After the operation, Tenma attempts to talk to Junkers, who state that The monster is coming! Inspector Lunge questions Junkers about his involvement in the homicides, and he becomes hysterical when Lunge asks who hired him. Tenma convinces Junkers to overcome his fear and confess his involvement. However, that night, Junkers finds his police guard dead, and he flees. Soon after, Tenma also finds the dead guard, poisoned by candy in the same manner as nine years ago and follows Junkers into a nearby construction site to find him with Johann Liebert. Junkers explains that Johan hired him and his associates, whom he has since killed, and is preparing to execute him while Johan reveals that his real name is not Liebert and admits that he was the one who poisoned the hospital officials and the policemen. Johan calmly executes Junkers and walks away, 
leaving Tenna distraught at his lack of respect for human life. Later, he explains everything to Inspector Lunge, who finds Tenna's involvement in these events suspicious. Nina Fortner, a bright university student studying law in Heidelberg, is seeing a counselor regarding strange dreams and has no memories of her life before the age of 10. She begins receiving poetic emails from an unknown person and decides to meet them, and one day in a lecture class, she is overcome by fear and nausea at the mention of a family massacre. Meanwhile, Tenma is investigating the serial murders of middle-aged, childless couples and is searching for information on Michael Reichmann which he believes was Johann's real name. He encounters an old blind man who befriended a boy called Franz who said that Tenma saved his life. The boy had an abiding interest in war stories, particularly those involving extreme fear and said that he would meet his twin sister when she turns 20 in Heidelberg. As Nina leaves to meet the unknown person, her parents prepare to tell her that she was adopted and later, at the arranged place she sees Johan nearby before she suddenly faints. With the help of Maurer, a local newspaper journalist, Tenma is able to track down the Fortners on the day of the twins' 20th birthday. The Fortners refuse to talk about the missing twin boy, but reveal that Nina has left to meet the mysterious stranger at Heidelberg Castle. Tenma drives to the castle where he saves Nina from a hired thug and takes her back home, trying to explain that she is Anna Liebert. Meanwhile, the thug, tied up with Tenma's necktie, fearfully meets his employer. Tenma and Nina return to find both the Fortners and the journalist dead. The scene brings Anna's memories flooding back and she says that she shot Johan. Two detectives arrive at the scene and escort Tenma and Nina away. However, he becomes suspicious of them and escapes with her. Back in town, Tenma finds that the detectives are authentic and the thug at the castle was found dead while Nina, now aware of her past, slips away from him. Inspector Lunge examines the scene and finds a necktie that he suspects belonged to none other than Tenma. The latter returns to work at the hospital in Dusseldorf while Lunge questions Eva, now a three-time divorcee, about the necktie he found at the murder scene, but she denies ever seeing it. Eva then pleads with Tenma to take her back, but he refuses and threatens to turn him over to Inspector Lunge as she gave the necktie to him years earlier. With the police on his tail, Tenma is forced to flee and recalls the events that have led to his current situation until five months later, he learns that an elderly couple were killed in Verdun and that he is the main suspect. Five months ago, Tenma began rigorous firearms training with a former army veteran named Hugo Bernhard who was also taking care of an angry orphan girl whose mother he shot dead in Myanmar. During his time there, Tenma creates a new bond between the girl and the veteran, and later when questioned by Inspector Lunge, Bernhard refuses to disclose Tenma's location. While investigating the murder of a prominent councilman and his wife at the Springer estate in Verdun, Tenma encounters the petty criminal Otto Heckel and escapes with him. Heckel suggests that they could make good money by operating on wounded criminals, but also reveals that he knows the councilman's killer. They visit the killer who is remorseful, duped by a man called Eric into committing the murders. But before Tenma can extract any more information, he end his life. In order to pay his debts, Heckel arranges for Tenma to be abducted to treat a wounded man who is a suspect in a terrorist attack, and despite being threatened, Tenma decides to save him anyway. While investigating in East Germany, Tenma discovers that Johann was adopted by the Lieberts from an orphanage called 511 Kinderheim which is now abandoned. He contacts Hartmann, a former district official with the ministry who explains that the orphanage was an extremely harsh environment for the children, ruled by fear and violence. There, Tenma also encounters a boy under Hartmann's care named Dieter, and when he discovers Dieter's body is covered with bruises, he confronts Hartmann and takes him to the hospital. Tenma then goes to another orphanage where the director Elna Theis revealed to him that 511 Kinderheim was an East German experimental laboratory. He learns that the orphans were part of a project to produce perfect soldiers through psychological reconstruction. However, during a power struggle, the 50 instructors and orphans were killed. Hartmann takes Dieter back from the hospital, and when Tenma visits Hartmann's apartment, he realizes that Hartmann was at 511 Kinderheim and is now trying to reshape Dieter to be similar to Johann. At the ruins of the orphanage, Hartmann explains to Tenma that the battle was triggered by Johann and that General Wolf is the key to Johann's origins. Much to Hartmann's surprise, Dieter decides to reject him and leaves with Tenma. Some time later, Tenma treats a local drunk after an accident and then assists Dr. Schumann, the local doctor in treating the village residents. 
He then visits an elderly woman who refuses to have herself examined and when he realizes that the woman has a subarachnoid hemorrhage. He performs an impromptu operation to save her. Meanwhile her son, a police officer, threatens to arrest Tenma after discovering that he is wanted for murder. However Schumann and the villagers convince him to let Tenma go, and he leaves with Dieter to continue his quest to find Johan. Workaholic Inspector Lunge is so busy investigating the case of a dead prostitute and her involvement with a politician that he shows no emotion when his wife and pregnant daughter leave him. When a key suspect in the case apparently end his life, Lunge is taken off all cases, so he decides to focus on catching Tenma. Meanwhile, Eva sleep with her gardener, but when she realizes that she is completely dissatisfied with her life, she burns her house down in a rage. In Frankfurt, Tenma questions the now disgraced former detective Messner over the Heidelberg murders ten months ago. Messner mentions the baby, a midget who is part of a right-wing nationalist organization looking for Nina. At the same time, Nina tries to find Johan, and acting as a prostitute, meets baby at the candy club, but he abducts her and later also captures Tenma. At baby's mansion she is greeted by Godelitz who explains that he is one of four men seeking to recruit Johan as their leader, and Nina is the bait. In the basement, Baby brutally questions Tenma and reveals that they plan to burn down the Turkish portion of Frankfurt, while Nina hears of the same plot from Ice, a Turkish woman held captive in the same mansion. She then finds Ice dead and discovers that her captor, Godelitz, and all his men have been murdered. Meanwhile, General Wolf's men take away Tenma and Dieter who was captured earlier. On the way, Tenma enables Dieter to return to Frankfurt to warn the Turkish community of the plot. Tenma meets Wolf who accepts his role in the origins of Johan whom he found cold and starving to death with his sister near the Czechoslovakian border. He then says that Johan has killed everyone who was close to him, including Godelitz and his men before he shows Tenma a message from Johan challenging him to meet at some warehouse ruins. Wolf then asks Tenma to kill Johan and back in Frankfurt, Dieter and Heckel are captured by neo-Nazis. Instead of meeting Johan, Tenma heads to the Turkish portion of Frankfurt to warn the residents of the neo-Nazi plot. Nina confronts Baby as he is having dinner, but he refuses to disclose the location of the planned main fire. Numerous small fires are started however they are relatively easy to extinguish while Nina finds and rescues Dieter and Heckel who says the main fire will most likely be set near the wharves. At the river, she and Dieter find a neo-Nazi in a chemical warehouse. Ready to start a blaze but Dieter manages to extinguish the fuse by using a valuable carpet heckle stole from a Turkish store. Later, as Tenma leaves to find Johan, Nina reveals that Johan is not one person because he has a split personality. Mr. Rosso, the owner of an Italian restaurant where Nina used to work as Anna Liebert, picks her up after questioning by police. She recalls the time she spent working in the restaurant and took marksmanship lessons in the afternoons. When challenged by Nina, Rosso admits that he used to be a professional assassin before she leaves and continues her search for Johan. Searching for an insight into Johan's personality, Tenma visits Dr. Rudy Gillen, a fellow student and academic rival at university who is now a practicing criminal psychoanalyst. Gillen intends to turn Tenma over to the authorities, but consults with one of his criminal patients in prison, Peter Jurgens. After the prisoner says he committed a murder for an unknown person and directs Gillen on where to find evidence that proves Johan exists, Gillen assists Tenma to escape. Tenma and Dieter hitch a ride with an elderly couple on the way to free him. Tenma wonders if the couple planned to turn him in when he realizes that the husband is a suspicious former police officer. He used to think that he could tell a criminal by their looks, but realized that it was not possible after his son committed a murder and the husband confirms that Tenma is a wanted criminal. However, he believes that he is innocent. In Nice, the former detective Muller, who with Messner killed Nina's foster parents, is newly married and enjoys a good life. He hires a private detective to investigate the whereabouts of Tenma, Nina and Messner, but when the detective arrives he is shot by Muller's bodyguard Roberto, who is working for Johan. Muller realizes that he was used to lure Nina into a trap, and Roberto takes Nina, promising to get her to Johan despite his plan to kill her. Roberto leave her with his subordinates, however, Muller suddenly arrives and rescues her although he is shot in the process. Lunge determines that the murder of a wealthy, middle-aged, childless couple does not fit the usual modus operandi of the serial murders, but uses it as an opportunity to lure Tenna to a trap. 
He suspects the nephew who stands to inherit their estate, while Tenma visits the murder scene and also realizes that it is a copycat murder. Lunge catches Tenma in the house, but before he can arrest him, he is critically wounded by the nephew. As he lies bleeding, Lunge still insists that Johan is the alter ego of Tenma, but when he falls unconscious, Tenma start treating his injury. Eva is arrested for public drunkenness and is also homeless after not paying her rent. She hooks up with Roberto, whom she was drinking with the night before her arrest, but after realizing that she has photos of Johan, Roberto presses her about her link to him and Eva reveals that she saw Johan at the construction site in Dusseldorf on the night Junkers was killed. Roberto prepares to kill her and to save her life. Eva offers the photos of Johan in exchange for information about Tenma's location. Roberto tells her that Tenma is currently treating a wounded mob boss at a country house near Fussen. Later, he and Eva approach the house and Roberto kills the bodyguard who just manages to warn his boss before he dies. Roberto doesn't trust Eva and shoots her in the leg, and as she lies bleeding, she tells Dieter to run as Tenma would never come to save her. However, the latter arrives and treats her wounds, then leaves her with the mob boss while he goes to Munich. There, Karl Newman is one of the students who reads passages of Latin on Tuesdays to the elderly, blind and very wealthy Hans George Schuld. Karl encounters fellow student Latte Frank, who does housekeeping for Schuld and whom she is using as the subject for her research paper, and he agrees to join her in tailing Schuld. They discover a woman claiming to be Margot Langer, the mother of his illegitimate son who turns out to be Karl. However, the student who reads on Thursdays also claims to be Schuld's son. Latte discovers that the Thursday boy is Edmund Farron, and when they go to visit him, they find him dead in his dormitory looking like he took his own life. Later, they encounter Johann Liebert who has enrolled in their university, and is Schuld's Friday's reader. Schuld hires a private investigator named Richard Braun to determine the truth behind Farron's death, and during a discussion with his psychotherapist Dr. Julius Reichwein, Braun confirms something is amiss with the death. Meanwhile, Johann offers to help Karl reconcile with his long-lost father, whom he believes is Schuld. When Karl and Latte take Schuld to visit a lake which is now a construction site, Johann arrives and paints a verbal picture that convinces Schuld that he is standing on the edge of a beautiful lake. Braun tries to reconcile with his ex-wife while dealing with his past alcoholism and again begins to suspect Karl is involved in Farron's death. Meanwhile, Karl is about to formalize his adoption with his foster parents, but Johann intervenes and enables him to reconcile with his real father, Schuld. Schuld informs Braun that the case involving the death of Farron is closed, but the latter becomes suspicious now that Karl and Johann are caring for Schuld. Braun decides to review all his unsolved homicide cases, but is haunted by the case that caused his alcoholism and error of judgment, which caused his dismissal from the police force. His investigations all seem to have a connection with Schuld, and when he presents his findings to Dr. Reichwein, the doctor also reveals that his friend Gillen believes that the name Johann is involved in murders aimed at isolating Schuld. Braun begins to observe Johann and investigate his origins, while Dr. Reichwein asks Gillen to question his criminal patient Peter Jurgens about Johann. Braun then discovers that the real Johann Liebert died at the age of two, and when Dr. Gillen shows a photo of Johann to Jurgens, it triggers painful memories and he promptly ends his life with Dr. Gillen's pen. At night, Johann visits Braun and manipulates him into a state of deep regret before he then offers a bottle of whiskey on the rooftop of a building. Sometime later, Dr. Reichwein is informed that Richard Braun is dead. Dr. Reichwein muses over the death of his friend and patient with Gillen who suspects foul play. He retraces Braun's last steps and determines his death was not an accident but a murder. Only for two thugs that are hired to kill him show up but he survives. Later, Roberto attempts to kill him at his office, but he is saved by Tenma who has been shadowing him. Dr. Reichwein arranges for Tenma to live in a safe house while he and Dr. Gillen attempt to figure out their next steps. However, Tenma leaves the safe house and Dieter with Dr. Reichwein while he tries to track down Johan and purchases a sniper rifle. Latte has a chance encounter with Nina and discovers that they are both researching Schuld and strike up a friendship but later, Latte realizes that she looks like Johan. Tenma prepares to kill Johan at a forest sanctuary but is unable to carry it through after meeting an old soldier who does not want bloodshed in the forest. Some children die while participating in a dangerous game of dare suggested by Johan to determine if they were chosen. 
Dieter manages to convince a seriously injured boy who survived the game not to commit the stunt again, and Schuld announces a large donation of antique books to the University of Munich, and a ceremony to commemorate the donation is planned. At the library, Johann passes out after he looks at the picture book of Blitter by Emil Scherb, about a monster with no name, and Tenma prepares to kill him at the book donation ceremony. Johann recovers from his fainting spell and responds to an invitation to go to visit the Red Hindenburg in the Red Light District, the apartment of the old prostitute who had been impersonating Carl Newman's mother Margot Langer. She tries to blackmail Johann, but Roberto kills her. Meanwhile, Tenma visits a local doctor to find out about the prostitute's death and finds the teenage daughter of a doctor treating undocumented immigrants and decide to help. Lunge questions Tenma's former friends from Japan to learn more about his suspect even missing an appointment with his daughter to see his new grandson. However, one of the men has the book Johann was apparently looking at when he fainted, which Lunge examines and translates some of the words. Dr. Reichwein confronts the foster parents of Johann with the facts of his activities and warns them that their lives are in danger, but they refuse to believe him. Tenma sneaks into the library with the rifle the night before the book donation ceremony. Reichwein confronts Schuld with evidence about Johann, but Schuld refuses to take any action, already suspecting that Johann plans a takeover of his affairs. Later, Reichwein realizes that Schuld is Johann's next target, and Lunge suspects that Schuld to be Tenma's next target, and both separately head to the library. Latte confronts Nina at the train station about being the twin sister of Johann after reading the book that made Johann collapse. Nina reads the picture book, A Nameless Monster, which triggers some memories and she tells Latte that Johan is her brother before she then decides to confront him at the book donation ceremony. During that time, Tenma is unable to kill Johan and while he delays, he is disarmed by Roberto. However, before Roberto can kill Schuld, a fire set by one of Johan's accomplices engulfs the library, creating hysteria and fear. Tenma manages to grab a handgun and points it at Roberto and a shot is heard. Tenma shoots Roberto who falls over the balcony and the fire inside the library spreads, but the people are trapped inside by locked doors. Tenma helps them escape while Nina has entered the building, but neither she nor Tenma can bring themselves to shoot Johan. Suddenly, the canopy over the stage collapses in flames, engulfing Nina and Schuld. Back at Schuld's residence, Carl finds the results of an investigation by Schuld into his mother's life and her disappearance. Lunge initially suspects that Tenma set the fire and planned to assassinate Schuld, but after Carl asks Lunge to search for Johan, who had not been seen since the fire, and he visits his former apartment, he begins to believe that Johan is real. Schuld asks Carl to deliver a message to someone in Dresden. Nina leaves the hospital and undergoes psychological analysis with Reichwein and Gillen to recover her memories which involve three frogs and a bridge. She leaves to find Tenma and Dieter insists on going with her. While in Dresden, Tenma meets Carl who tells him that the twins' mother is alive and living in Prague. Wolfgang Grimmer is a freelance journalist and former East German investigating allegations of child abuse and psychological reprogramming in former East Germany orphanages. While on a train to Prague, he shares a booth with Tenma and when guards arrive to arrest him, Grimmer assists to escape and then helps him across the border. In Prague, Grimmer confronts Petrov, the former director of 511 Kinderheim about his involvement. He presses Petrov for records but he denies that he was present during the revolt. Grimmer tails Petrov, then realizes that he is running a boys' orphanage, and when they return they notice a woman who resembles Anna Liebert leaving the orphanage. They find the assistant Anna dead and Petrov mortally wounded but before he dies, Petrov blames Johann for the disaster at 511 Kinderheim and provides Grimmer with a key to a safety deposit box containing evidence of Johann's early years. Inspector Philip Zeman of the Prague Police questions Grimmer about the death of Petrov and a blonde woman suspected of the crime. After leaving the police station, Grimmer is abducted by former members of the Czechoslovakian STB, Kesmer Myrit and Yakov Swasek. They and Philip torture him for Petrov's safety deposit box key but he passes out only for the woman resembling Anna to interrupt the interrogation by shooting one of the STB members. Grimmer wakes up and finds the three men dead and concludes that his alter ego, the magnificent Steiner, is responsible. Detective Sook is called to the scene of the brutal triple murder, and Jan Sook suspects Grimmer. Meanwhile Sook meets an attractive woman, who looks like Anna Liebert in a bar. Later, 
Head Detective Patera tells Sook that Zaymon was investigating former STB members in the Prague police force and he finds Zaymon's notes in a locker indicating that Patera and Janacek were in the STB, and notifies the Commissioner Hamerlik who is later revealed to be protecting the former STB members. While Sook meets the woman again, Hamerlik and Janacek die after eating candy given to Patera by the same woman. The murder of Commissioner Hamerlik and the two corrupt officers stirs up a media frenzy. Sook questions the boys from Petrov's orphanage who say a woman was Petrov's killer. Tenma arrives in Prague and obtains some information about the mother of the Lieber twins. Sook tries to get close to the woman who calls herself Anna Lieber, but she is later revealed to be Johan in disguise. Nepola, the new Prague police commissioner suspects that Sook may be involved in the deaths of Hammerlich and the two corrupt officers and assigns detectives Novak and Zanda to follow him. Sook meets Grimmer, and they retrieve the safety deposit box which contains research documents and a cassette tape for an interview of a drugged Johan in which the describes himself as containing a monster. While searching Sook's apartment, Detective Novak and Detective Zanda are killed by Johan masquerading as Anna. Tenma finds out about the murder of Commissioner Hamelik through poison candy and endeavors to find Sook, who has given his mother the tape. Tenma visits her in hospital, but she has dementia and poor memory. Sook and Grimmer hide out in an abandoned building, but they are attacked and Sook is critically wounded while Grimmer goes into a rage and beats his assailants senseless. Tenma arrives on the scene and treats Sook and the other injured men as Grimmer reveals that he was at 511 Kinderheim and explains the origins of Alter Ego, the magnificent Steiner, a weakling who transforms into a raging muscle-bound hero when threatened, but with no recollection of the events afterwards. Nina and Dieter arrive in Prague, but she is shocked when residents call her Anna and she begins to recall memories from her childhood. Tenma and Grimmer finds that Sook has been removed from the hospital, and Captain Karel Renka, a former top member of the STB proposes to release Sook to Tenma and Grimmer in exchange for the tape and research materials for a client in Germany. They refuse, however, Grimmer suddenly remembers Adolf Reinhardt who was kind to him at 511 Kinderheim. While they do not reach an agreement, Ranka does mention that Franz Bonaparte was heavily involved in the care of the Lieber twins. Bonaparte was also the author of a children's picture book The Nameless Monster, and was living at the Red Rose Mansion. Meanwhile, Nina and Dieter find the apartment she shared with her twin brother and their mother, which triggers more of her memories making her confused. After confirming Sook's safety, Grimmer and Tenna agree to deliver the tape and research materials to Ranka. However, when they visit Sook's mother, they discover the research materials gone, and Johann Liebert has recorded a message on the tape for Tenma. Meanwhile, Inspector Lunge decides to take a holiday in Prague and questions an associate commissioner Nepola on the recent developments, and asks him to translate a copy of Picture Book. The Nameless Monster. Lunge also questions Sook's colleagues about the recent events, and researches the author Franz Bonaparte and his aliases, Emil Scherb and Klaus Poppy. The children from Petrov's former orphanage try to find the blonde woman and prove Grimmer's innocence. Meanwhile, Lunge questions Sook's mother in the hospital about a blonde lady who visited, but she says the woman had the voice of a man. The boy named Milash encounters Johan disguised as Anna Liebert who sends him to a nearby red light district in a fruitless search to find his mother, and convinces Milash that he is not wanted. Grimmer and Tenma find Johan's apartment, but he and Milash have already left. As the latter wanders the streets, the experience makes him depressed and suicidal. However, Grimmer and Tenma find him in time creating an unexpected intense emotional experience for both Grimmer and Milash. Lunge visits Sook in the STB hospital and suggests that the one responsible for his situation may be the last person he may suspect, a reference to Johan masquerading as Anna. Lunge meets Ranka and reveals that he was unable to obtain information on the whereabouts of Franz Bonaparte who lived in the mansion of Red Roses and Ranka reveals that it was abandoned after all the political prisoners and researchers were killed in one day. Lunge obtains permission to investigate the mansion and exposes a hidden room reeking of antiseptic, suspecting that it is the site of a massacre, and there is also a portrait of a woman who looks like Anna Liebert. Meanwhile, Tenma visits Zobak, a previous publisher of Franz Bonaparte's work, but after Tenma leaves, Zobak calls the police. Grimmer tells him that he will take the blame for Johan's crimes and they part ways, however the Prague police suddenly arrive and arrest Tenma. Hans George Schuld, with the help of Reichwein, re-explores his past with Karl Neumann's mother, 
Helenka Novakova and recalls her dear friend in Prague near the three frogs who had twins. As news of Tema's arrest spreads, his former friends and patients react with shock and disbelief, and vow to help him. Suk tries to leave the hospital to help Tenma, but is stopped by Detective Bradek and Stransky who inform him that Grimmer sent documents taking responsibility for deaths of the police officers. Lunge also learns of Tenma's arrest, but he is more interested in the mansion of Red Roses, where he finds a letter possibly addressed to the twins' mother while Tenma is deported back to Dusseldorf. Prisoner Gunther Milch pretends to be sick, and when Tenma is called, he proposes they escape together. Former patients of Isler Memorial Hospital enlist the aid of a lawyer named Fritz Vardman to represent Tenma, and after visiting him in prison, he agrees to take on the defense. Meanwhile, Eva returns to Dusseldorf, and after passing out following another drinking binge, she has a vision of seeing of Johann Liebert the night Adolf Junkers was murdered. Vardman is called to the hospital when his wife goes into labor, so he asks for the lawyer named Alfred Bowell to represent Tenma. However, when Bowell appears in prison, Tenma is shocked to see that he is Roberto who says that Eva Heinemann will be his next target. After hearing his threat, Tenma decides to confess to all charges against him so he can be placed in the same transport van to a federal penitentiary with the prisoner Gunther Milch, who is planning an escape. On hearing the news of Tenma's confession, Eva remembers the time she was with him where she treated him badly and decides to testify on his behalf. Calling Alfred Bowell who arranges to visit her, Gunther Milch's escape plan almost goes wrong when the prison van hits and almost kills his younger brother Gustav. However, Tenma manages to grab a gun and order the guards to release them. News of the escape is broadcast while Eva is waiting to meet lawyer Alfred Baul in her hotel lobby. However, she overhears a phone conversation and recognizes Roberto's voice realizing that he is after her. Along the road, Tenma forces Gunther to take Gustav to Isler Memorial Hospital before he and Gunther part ways. After Eva flees to her hotel room, a knock on the door is heard which she hesitatingly answers. Tenma desperately tries to search for her before Roberto can reach her. However, when he enters her hotel room, Eva is already gone. Meanwhile, Lunge returns to Dusseldorf and questions Vardman about his father's past and links to Franz Bonaparte whom he believes was with the Czechoslovakian secret police. After Lunge leaves, Tenma accosts Vardman in his car but the latter confesses he knows nothing about the plot against Eva. While out, Vardman's house is ransacked, presumably for his father's notebook containing notes about Bonaparte and the Red Rose Mansion, and he gives the notebook to Tenma before he visits his wife and new baby girl in hospital. Tenma heads towards the Red Rose Mansion in Prague, while Vardman and Dr. Reichwein also make their way there. Meanwhile in Prague, Nina follows her memories and she finds the Red Rose Mansion with Dieter but when she enters the hidden room, a painful memory is triggered involving a room full of bodies, and she faints. Later Nina and Dieter find themselves in the care of Jarmer Lipsky, a struggling puppeteer who shows her his large collection of children's picture books, including those by Jakob Farabek, Emil Scherb, and Klaus Poppy and reveals that he was a student at Red Rose. Meanwhile, Johan enters the mansion and sets it on fire. Nina recalls her and Johan's adoption by the Lieberts and their emigration to the West and how on the night a visitor came, Johann shot the Lieberts and told her to shoot him. Tenma arrives at the burned-out mansion, just as Firefighter discovers a grave with the bones of up to 46 people at the base of a rose bush. General Wolf's men take Tenma to see the dying general who tells the story of how he found the nameless twins, their only possession being the book monster without a name from which he gave the boy the name Johann, possibly awakening something inside him. Nina, Dieter and Lipsky visit the ruins, but they take Dieter's suggestion to create new, happy memories. After they leave, Lunge arrives at Lipsky's apartment and asserts that Lipsky is the son of Franz Bonaparte. Eva Heinemann's bodyguard Martin Rias is badly shot dying following a gunfight and as he is driven to see Tenma and he recounts the events that led to his predicament. He was given a job by the baby and Peter Kapik to escort Eva Heinemann from Dusseldorf to Frankfurt on the same day she encountered Roberto. After meeting Kapik, she agrees to attend some exclusive parties and then goes on shopping spree, even buying clothes for Martin to groom him in the mold of Tenma. However, the return to her old role as a fashionable, high-class lady fails to live up to her expectations. Martin recalls how he met Tenma for the first time while he was guarding Eva who pointed out Johan at a party as Kapik then introduced to a young man named Christoph Sivernich. 
Later Capic ordered Eve the killed as her job was over, but Martin decided to protect her instead. He attended the next party alone and tailed Kristoff to his hotel only to find Kristoff expecting him. Kristoff then described Martin's life to date in detail and hit a nerve when he suggested that the women in Martin's life usually choose death causing the other to leave just as Johan arrived at the apartment. Martin recalls how he decided to protect Eva and was involved in a gunfight with a hit team assigned to kill her. While she was able to escape, he was shot and mortally wounded and finally meets Tenma telling him that Kapik is still involved with the experiments at the Red Rose Mansion which created Johan before finally succumbing to his wounds. Eva is heartbroken at the news of Martin's death and Tenma suggests that she head to Munich for protection under Reichwein. However, she alights from the train and obtains a gun, planning to kill the monster. Nina returns to the apartment that she lived in with her mother and Johan and encounters more painful memories before she returns to Munich and Reichwein where she volunteers for hypnosis to find the truth behind these memories. But she attacks Gillen when those buried memories resurface. She leaves Dr. Reichwein's house two days later to try to stop Tenma from killing her brother. Meanwhile, Suk and Vardman interview former residents of the Red Rose mansions to gather information on Franz Bonaparte's reading sessions with his picture books, and for Vardman to find out more about his father's true involvement in Czechoslovakian politics. While searching for Peter Kapik in Frankfurt, Tenma is chased by police and is hit by a van. He awakes to find that he has a sprained ankle and was treated by a dentist named Milan Kalash. Kalash tells Tenma that Peter Kapik was responsible for the riots that broke out in the Turkish quarter of the city and the deaths of the loved ones of different nationalities who now live with him. Kalash feels responsible because he brought Kapik, his former childhood friend, to Frankfurt and plans to kill him at a convention although Tenma tries to prevent him from going and Kalash fails in his attempt before is shot dead by police. Nina arrives in Frankfurt where she recognizes Peter Kapik in a television news report of the assassination attempt. Detective Benjamin Weisbach was one of the first investigators in the murder of the Liebert parents, and on his last day before retirement, he escorts a convicted serial murderer named Reinhard Dinger and questions him about why he committed the murders and Dinger dates it back to when he sheltered young twins and the boy encouraged his violent tendencies which Weisbach recognizes as the Liebert twins. At the same prison, Gillen is interviewing several murderers about why they also killed people who did not fit their usual modus operandi, revealing that they too met them and both realize that these criminals committed their atypical murders at the request of a young man who fits the description of Johan. The baby expresses his concerns to Kapik about Johan's program of killing people to hide the scandals of Kristoff Sievernich and whether they can control him. He also reveals that Nina Fortner has arrived in Frankfurt only to be later assassinated by a prostitute, and his death sends shockwaves through Kapik's organization. The latter becomes paranoid about who is loyal or not, and panicking, he kills one of his guards who is driving him to his villa. He makes it to his cottage where Johan is waiting for him saying that Franz Bonaparte is still alive. The news of Milan Kalash's death devastates his friends and Tenma is even more determined to find Johan so he follows Kristoff to his apartment. But Eva is already there, prepared to kill him. When Kapik's men pick up Nina, she tried to kill him, but pauses and Kapik realizes his hold on his organization is crumbling and Johan is pulling the strings. The police search Milan Kalash's house and discover that his target was Kapik and Eva Akast Kristoff, demanding to know Johan's whereabouts, as he revealed that he and Johan were the only survivors of the massacre at Kinderheim. Kristoff then grabs the gun from Eva, but before he can shoot, Tenma arrives and shots are fired. Kapik reveals to Nina that she and her twin brother Johan are the products of an extensive eugenics experiment, which he designed to breed the perfect children without their mother's knowledge. When pregnant, their mother unsuccessfully tried to escape, and after the children were born they were taken away before he then takes Nina to an abandoned building where Johan is waiting. Meanwhile, Tenma drives Kristoff to a hospital while Eva demands to know Johan's location, and while she makes a phone call to the hospital, Kristoff reveals Johan's location to Tenma who leaves without her. Nina enters the abandoned building and sees Johan, and memories come flooding back of when they fled Prague. And the people Johan killed that were kind to them, she confronts Johan who presents her with a story of the brainwashing which happened at the Red Rose Mansion and the occasion when over 40 people were poisoned, except Franz Bonaparte who survived. Suddenly, Nina realizes that she was the one who witnessed the deaths, not Johan, 
and it was she who ran home to find Johan dressed as her. The shock of this revelation nearly drives her take her own life, but she is saved by Tenma realizing that Johan took her experiences and made them his own. Capic then arrives and tells Tenma that he is going after Franz Bonaparte. However, he is gunned down shortly afterwards by two members of his organization for the paranoid killing of his own guard earlier. Later, Johan visits one of his hired hitmen and shoots him, before leaving stating that the true end is where he must be. Using a postcard provided by Lipsky, Lunge arrives in the quiet town of Rehenheim, and after being helped to his room in Hotel Verstek by the boy Vim Knopp, he encounters Grimmer who using the alias Newmayer. Everyone in town thinks they hear a gunshot, and Grimmer offers to find a lost dog as an opportunity to investigate the town. Lunge also explores the town, and he again meets Vim who is abused by his drunkard father Herbert, and bullied by other boys. Lunge recognizes Grimmer who alludes to an impending massacre in the town. Meanwhile, Henning and Franca, an elderly working-class couple, realize that they have won the lottery, and they buys guns fearing someone will try to steal their winnings. The local bullies tell them they dumped his bike near the vampire's house, and when he goes there, he sees a murdered cat then encounters Grimmer, and lunge inside the house which is filled with sketches of the Lieber twins. On the other side, as Conrad, the local cafe owner and jam maker, is clearing vines he is approached by a stranger holding a gun. Lunge tells Grimmer that something terrible may already be happening in Rehenheim, a quiet town that appears to be filled with unhappy people and when the Henniks go to see Conrad, they find his murdered body. After being beaten up by the bullies again, Vim is offered a gun to kill them, while the elderly couple living at the hotel also offer his drunken father a gun. As Nina recovers in the hospital, she tells Tenma that Johan is orchestrating an event that will lead to his suicide, but will also involve the massacre of innocents. Tenma travels to Prague and meets Lipsky and asserts that his father Bonaparte, whose real name is Klaus Poppy, and Johan are probably in a town called Rehenheim. Meanwhile, access to Rehenheim is cut off because of heavy rain as gunshots are heard and Lunge is suspicious of the elderly couple living in the hotel. People in Rehenheim start to get shot at dead by outsiders and each other. Herman is ridiculed and refused service at the pub and leaves, then returns prepared to shoot them, but he finds everyone dead. Vim's bullies are shot dead making him think he shot them, but Grimmer finds the gun is still loaded. Both he and Lunge determine that the elderly man in the wheelchair was giving weapons to people in the town, and that the elderly owner of the Hotel Verstek is Klaus Poppy. In Munich, Reichwein and Gillen show Nina an email from Johann inviting her to Rehenheim and Gillen agrees to escort her there. Back in Rehenheim, the murders continue, led by Roberto. Bonaparte awaits his fate, prepared to die but Grimmer swears that he will be publicly exposed. The Hennigs arrive at the hotel, and using their weapons, Lunge decides to confront a ringleader who is reportedly at the Burbach Hotel, while Grimmer prepares to mount defense at Bonaparte's hotel. Tenma arrives at Rehenheim by foot and tries to evacuate some women and children. Grimmer binds the elderly couple as they prepare to repel any attacks while Tenma encounters Lunge who grudgingly apologizes for his previous accusations against him and asks Tenma to take the waitress else to the Hotel Verstek after she fled from Roberto. As Nina and Gillen rush to Rehenheim, Lunge begins his assault at the Birdbach Hotel. Back at the Hotel Verstek, they come under heavy gunfire, the Hennicks are wounded and the elderly couple are killed. Grimmer steps out to the streets to reason with the unknown assailants. However, Elsa is shot dead just as she reaches him, and he is shot as well. Grimmer's anger overwhelms him and he charges into the gunman's building, meanwhile. Nina and Gillen reach a path that leads to Rehenheim, and meet survivors who Gillen tells to call the authorities as Nina runs into the town. Grimmer is able to kill four of the assailants before Tenma arrives and tells him that he used his own anger instead of becoming the magnificent Steiner to defeat his attackers. Before succumbing to his fatal injuries, Grimmer gives Tenma the letter Inspector Lunge found at the Red Rose and he finally experiences the emotion of sadness before Vim and Bonaparte arrive and mourn his death. Lunge finds Roberto at the Hotel Birdbach, but is shot and Tenma reads the letter which was written by Bonaparte who confesses that he fell in love with the mother of the twins and had a change of heart, so he killed everybody at the mansion who knew about the experiment. Tenma and Bonaparte walk towards the Birdbach Hotel and the latter says that he visited the Lieberts on the night of their murders to see the children and was aware of what happened later. He admits that he created a monster and Tenma explained that he brought him back to life. 
In Hotel Bird Bach Lunge and Roberto have shot each other and Roberto taunts him about his failed family life saying that Johan wants Tenna to be the last one left alive to see what Johan saw. Lunge manages to beat Roberto and demands to know where Johan is. Meanwhile, Nina and Gillen arrive at the Hotel Verstek where Vim recognizes her from Bonaparte's paintings. She and Dr. Gillen go to the house containing drawings of the twins which triggers memories of the Red Rose Mansion poisoning and her mother telling the twins to flee. One of the few survivors, Herbert is still looking for his son Vim, blaming the devil for the deaths of the townspeople. Tenma, Vim, and Bonaparte arrive at the Hotel Birdbach when Johan arrives. Bonaparte attempts to shoot but is gunned down by Roberto who soon dies of his own injuries. Johan wants Tenma to shoot him just as Nina and Gillen arrive and she tells Johan that she forgives him. However, he pulls a gun and threatens to kill them to force Tenma to shoot him until Herbert arrives and, seeing images of a horrible beast, shoots Johan in the head. With the massacre now over, authorities rush into the town and attempt to determine what happened from statements by Gillen and Inspector Lunge while Herbert is taken away for questioning over his shooting of Johan. Just as Tenma is recognized and about to be arrested, an ambulance worker arrives asking for his assistance revealing that Johan is still alive with a bullet wound to his brain. Lund suggests that Tenma is the only qualified neurosurgeon who can save him and later, he prepares to operate and save Johan again. Some time after the events at Rehenheim, Carl informs Schul that Tenma has been cleared of all charges and is now working for Doctors Without Borders. Eva informs Reichwein that she is now working as an interior designer and has overcome her anger at Tenma and her grief over Martin, and gives him a scrapbook of clippings on Tenma. Sook, Vardman, and Lunge pay their respects at Grimmer's grave where Lunge tells them that he is now a professor at the police academy, and leaves a cold beer at the graveside. Otto Heckel gives information to Dieter for Tenma on the whereabouts of the twin's mother, and when Tenma visits her in southern France, she tells him that she loved the father of her twins and wished revenge on those who killed him through her children. She also recalls how the children did not want to be abandoned by their mother and tells Tenma their real names. In Heidelberg, Nina graduates from university while Tenma visits an apparently comatose Johan and has a hallucination of the man wondering if his mother chose Nina to be taken for the experiment to protect him, or had she mistaken him for his sister. As Tenma leaves the police hospital, Johan's bed is shown empty with the window open. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then consider subscribing and liking it, and don't forget to check out my merch store and Ko-Fi page, your support will be much appreciated.